Hello everyone, welcome to online learning. Um, yes, we left off in chapter 12. We decided to hold off on chapter 12 and start you off with the online learning with something that's a little bit easier to do um, and then work our way back to chapter 12. Uh, so we decided to go with chapter 14 first and then chapter 15 also. Uh, chapter 14, this is gonna be a one week lesson long video. You watch the video, you work on the assignment that's given to you in Class Kick. There is a hard copy of notes also in Schoology, so if you need to look at examples after you watch the video, you can do so. Um, you can raise your hand in Class Kick if you need help with an assignment, uh, or you can email me or um, check me out during office hours, and I can chat with you during office hours. All those hours will be posted to Schoology. So what you're going to want to learn about today are classifying numbers, the different types of numbers, and properties of numbers. Again, this lesson, this video is intended for one week long. Uh, students should watch the video, then complete the assignment in Class Kick. One of the big things that you need to know, you don't need to show work for me in Class Kick. Many assignments, you'll, it'll be a lot easier to do on your graphing calculator or on paper. Um, you don't need to show me that, just need to type in your answers or write in the answers or graphs or whatever uh, into your Class Kick so I can then grade them. Some places will have boxes for you to type right in your answer. Other ones you'll have to actually um, use your mouse or use your touch screen to draw in a graph or use a text box to write in an answer. And then I'll grade it and I'll get back to you on it. Um, so anyway, chapter 14. Oops, chapter 14. Um, the, what we're talking about are different kinds of numbers. We have natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, and real numbers. Natural numbers. Natural numbers are just counting numbers. Starting with 1, not at 0, and then there are the whole numbers after that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on and so forth. Not 0 and not negative numbers. Whole numbers are all the natural numbers, but they include 0. So starting at 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and they keep on going. Again, not negative numbers. Integers include the negative numbers. They're positive numbers and negative whole numbers. So all the negative numbers, neg negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and they keep on going. And also all the positive numbers, including 0. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Rational numbers. A rational number is a number that can be converted into a decimal that terminates or repeats. It includes all fractions and all percents. Terminates means that it stops, like a number like 5.2, or a number like negative 3.25, or a repeating number 5.3 repeating. So 5.3333333. Irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are the big, long, ugly decimals that don't repeat and don't end. Um, pi is the most famous irrational number. Real numbers. All the numbers that we work with are real numbers. Yes, there are such things as imaginary numbers, um, but we're not going to get into those in this course. So every single number that we work with is a real number. So we like to use this sort of target circle. Um, all of these numbers are all real numbers. The set of real numbers include all the rationals, all the, ir or all the integers, all the whole numbers, all your natural or counting numbers, and all of your irrational numbers. So all of these numbers are real. The rational numbers, we're going to sort of take these numbers and move them into here. So the rational numbers, um, two-fifths. Uh, actually, let's start with the natural numbers. So out of these numbers, the natural or counting numbers would be your two that we have. Ah, we have the two that we have right there. Sorry about that. We have the 2, that is a natural or counting number. Remember, they're all the numbers that are starting with 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 4 would be a natural or a counting number. And the square root of 25, the square root of 25, when you type that into your calculator, the square root of 25 is 5. So the square root of 25 is a natural or counting number as well. Um, all of these natural numbers are also whole numbers, they're also integers, they're also rational, they're also real. Then we have the set of whole numbers. The whole set of whole numbers is going to include zero. Zero is a whole number, it's also an integer, it's also rational, it's also real. An integer out of here would be negative eight. Negative eight 
is an integer, it's also rational, it's also real. Negative 8 is not a whole number and is not a natural number. Rational numbers. They're your fractions, so like two-fifths. Two-fifths is a rational number. They are your terminating decimals, like 1.3. 1 1.3 is a rational number. They are the square root of 0 0.25 is a rational number. Um, 9.23 repeating. This is this one, 9.232323, or 9.23 repeating. That is a rational number because it's a repeating decimal. 2.6 is a repeating decimal. Again, 2.6 repeating is a repeating decimal. That's rational. Negative 12 over 5. Negative 12 over 5 is negative 2.4. Negative 2.4 is a terminating decimal. That is uh, terminating, so that is rational. All of these rational numbers are also considered real numbers, but they are not integers, they are not whole numbers, they are not natural numbers. Our irrational numbers from this list are 0 0.122333444, 4 dot 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 at the end. You cannot use the repeating sign here, so they are not repeating, and it is not terminating. It keeps on going, that's what this dot 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 means at the end, that it keeps on going. So again, your irrational numbers are your big, long, ugly decimals. If you type in the square root of 10, the square root of 10 is 3.162277666. You can't use a repeating sign over that big, long, ugly decimal, so that is irrational. Pi. Pi is the most famous irrational number there is. Pi has been calculated to trillions of places. It never repeats, it never ends. So pi is the most famous irrational number. Again, all of these are considered real numbers, however. But things like 2 or 4 or 5 are a natural number, they're a whole number, they're an integer, they're irrational, and they're real. So numbers can have more than one classification. So closure. You have to decide if something is closed or not closed. A set of numbers is considered closed under an operation if and only if an operation between those numbers produces the same type of number all the time. So if you add together a natural number plus a natural number, will you get a natural number? If you do, it will be closed. If you don't, it will be not closed. If it's not closed, you have to give something called a counter example. An example that an example that is, that disproves an idea. I thought there was a thing. So it is an example that disproves an idea. So natural numbers, under addition, a natural number, for example, like 2 plus 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, or 2 plus 4 is 6, or 6 plus 8 is 14. Those are natural numbers. You will always get a natural plus a natural will always give you a natural, so that is considered closed. Subtraction. Subtraction is not closed. Yes, you could do like 10 minus 8 is 2. That's a natural minus a natural, which gives you natural. But there's some instances where it doesn't give you a natural number as an answer. So a counterexample to this would be 3 minus 5. 3 is a natural number, 5 is a natural number, but 3 minus 5 gives you negative 2. Negative 2 is not a natural number, because remember, natural numbers start off at 1 and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 2 is not natural, so that is not closed. Multiplication is closed. If we do 3 times 2, 3 times 2 is 6. 4 times 5 is 20. 8 times 5 is 40. Natural times a natural will give you a natural. Division is not closed. Yes, there's some that work. If you did 10 divided by 5, that will give you 2. Natural divided by natural gives you a natural. However, if you do something like 1 divided by 2, that's a natural divided by a natural. That will give you 0 
0.5 is not a natural number, therefore this is not closed. Whole numbers, a whole number plus a whole number. So whole numbers are 0 through infinity. If I do 0 plus 1, it's going to give me 1. If I do 1 plus 5, it's going to give me 6. 7 plus 2, that's going to be closed. Subtraction, again, it doesn't work because of negatives. I can do 5 minus 2, which gives me 3, or 6 minus 5, which gives me 1, but if I do a smaller minus a bigger, it's going to give me a negative number. That, those negative numbers are not whole numbers, therefore it's not closed. Multiplication is closed. 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 5 is, um, 4 times 5 is 20, 0 times 2 is 0. Those are all closed. They all fall within whole numbers. Division is not closed. Yes, you can do 5 divided by, or not 5 divided by, but 10 divided by 5, which is 2. You can do 20 divided by 4, which is 5. But if you do a smaller minus a bigger, you're going to get a decimal answer, and that is not, that is not in the set of whole numbers, because decimals can't be in there. Integers. A negative number plus a negative number gives you a negative number. For example, negative 1 plus negative 2 is negative 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. So integers under addition are closed. You'll always get an integer answer. Subtraction is closed because now we can have negatives. 5 minus 2 is 3. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Both 3 and negative 3 are both integers. You won't get a decimal. Multiplication is closed. 2 times 3 is 6. 5 times 2 is 10. If we throw a negative in there, negative 6 times 5 is negative 30. Those are all integer answers. Division, however, is not closed because we can't get a decimal answer. If, for example, you did 3 divided by 8, you get a decimal answer. You can't have that. Rational numbers. Rational numbers include terminating and repeating decimals. You will always get a terminating and repeating decimal if we use a terminating or repeating decimal. Um, we can also use integers and things like that. It will always be a rational number. You're not going to get a big, long, ugly decimal. Subtraction is also closed under rational. You'll always get some sort of rational number, whether it's a terminating decimal or a repeating decimal. It won't go on and on forever with a big, long, ugly number. Multiplication, same thing. You'll always get a rational number. Even if we do like 5.1 times 3.2, you're going to get some sort of terminating or repeating decimal. Division, same thing. You're always going to get a terminating or repeating decimal. You'll never get a big, long, ugly decimal. Eventually, it might not fit on your screen, but eventually it will terminate or repeat. Irrational numbers. Irrational numbers with, irrational numbers with um, adding is not closed. For example, a big, long, ugly decimal that is an irrational number is square root of 5. And the negative square root of 5. Well, square root of 5 plus the negative square root of 5 equals 0. 0 is not an irrational number. 0 is rational. 0 is an integer. 0 is a whole number. 0 is a natural number. But 0 is not an irrational number. So when you have opposites like that, it's not going to be closed because 0 is not an irrational number. The same thing happens with subtraction. If you do the number minus the same number that's irrational, for example, pi minus pi, is zero. Zero is not an irrational number. With multiplying, it is not closed either. If we do the square root of 5 times the square root of 20, you get the square root of 100. That's how square roots work. And the square root of 100 is actually 10. 10 is not an irrational number because our answer is not irrational. This is not irrational. For division, if we did the square root of 120 divided by the square root of 30, we would get the square root of 4. Well, the square root of 4 equals 2. 2 is not an irrational number. Because we didn't get an irrational number, it is not considered closed. With real numbers, all of them are closed. Whoa, Nelly. Um, with real numbers, all of them are closed. All of them are closed because you will always get a real number when you're using a real number. Again, we're not talking about imaginary numbers yet. That's something that you'll learn later on in trig um, in 11th grade math. Uh, but we aren't working with them then, so all of the real numbers are always closed. Um, one of the things that we need to know, um, they have this all the time on the Regents exam, 
is, and just ignore this slide for a second, whenever you have a rational and you do adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing by an irrational number. This is one of those multiple choice questions that they love. Irrational plus an irrational, irrational minus an irrational, irrational times an irrational, or irrational divided by an irrational, you will always get an irrational number. That's just one of those things that you need to memorize. So one of the things that you're going to have to do on your class kick assignment is you're going to be given a list of numbers. You have to tell me, are they real, natural, whole, integers, rational, or irrational? Remember, they can be more than one, all right? And you have to list them all if they're more than one. So the square root of 400. Well, the square root of 400, when you take the square root, and I think we talked about this right before break, the square root of, the square root of 400 is actually positive or negative 20. Because 20 times 20 is 400, negative 20 times negative 20 is 400. So it's plus or minus 20. Well, so we have a positive 20 and we have a negative 20. That is a real number. Is that a natural number? No, because of the negative 20. Is that a whole number? No, because of the negative 20. Are these both integers, positive and negative 20? Yes, they are. So they're integers. Are they rational? Yes, they are. Are they irrational? Are they a big, long, ugly decimal point that doesn't repeat and doesn't end? No. So 20 and negative 20 is real, an integer, and rational. Pi. Pi is a real number. Remember, all of these are real numbers. All of these are real numbers, so we could just go through and put real, 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 real. Pi. Is pi a natural number? No, because it's that big, long, ugly decimal. Is it a whole number? No. Nope. Is it an integer? No. Nope. Is it a rational number? No. Nope. The most famous irrational number that there is is pi. Number three, this is a repeating decimal, 73.454545. So is it real? Yes, it is. Is it a natural number? No, because it's a decimal. Whole number? No, because it's a decimal. Integer? No, because it's a decimal. Rational? Yes. Repeating decimals are rational. Is it irrational? No. 9.10102030508013. I don't see it's not, it's a decimal, so it can't be natural, whole, or an integer. I can't use a repeating symbol anywhere, so it's not rational because it's not repeating. It doesn't terminate because the dot, dot, dot at the end means it goes on forever. This has to be irrational. Any percent. The percent, when you type the percent into the calculator, if you move your decimal point over two places, we're looking at zero, we're looking at 0 0.135. That's really the number that we're looking at there. So is it real? Yes. Is it natural? No, because it's a decimal. Whole? No, because it's a decimal. Integer? No, because it's a decimal. Rational? Yes, because it is a terminating decimal. It stops. Is it irrational? No, because it stops. Zero. Is zero real? Yes, it is. Is it a natural number? No. Natural numbers do not include zero. Is it a whole number? Yes, it is. Is it an integer? Yes, it is. Is it rational? Yes, it is. Is it irrational? No, it's not. 15 thirds, 15 thirds, 15 divided by 3 is 5. 5 is a real number. It's a natural number. It's a whole number. It's an integer. And it's rational. It's not irrational because it's not a big, long, ugly decimal. Negative 16. Negative 16, that's real. Is it natural? No, because it's negative. Is it whole? No, because it's negative. Is it an integer? Yes, it is. Is it rational? Yes, it is. Is it irrational? No, it's not. So again, they, can have, they will have more than one answer. Uh, so that was 14.1. Right, 14.2 14, are properties of numbers. You're going to have some matching in this, and we'll do some examples of matching. There's a bunch of different properties. They love these as multiple choice questions on your Regents exam. Commutative property. What the word commutative means 
is commutative switches the order of the numbers. All right, commutative switches the order. Notice we have commutative of addition and commutative of multiplication. Commutative switches the order. A plus B is the same thing as B plus A. Or A times B is the same thing as B times A. If you really stop and think about that for a second, it makes sense. 5 plus 1 is the same thing as 1 plus 5. 2 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2. All we're doing is switching the order there. So commutative switches the order. Associative, notice we have associative addition and associative multiplication, so we have adding and we have multiplying. Associative switches the grouping. Associative switches what's inside the parentheses. A plus B plus B plus... A plus B plus C is the same thing as A plus B plus C. We're switching the what's inside the parentheses, but it won't make a difference in your answer. For example, if we had the numbers 1, 2, and 3. If we did order of operations, we'd do 2 plus 3 first, which is 5, plus 1, which is 6. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6. So 6 is 6. So switching what goes first, what goes inside the parentheses, does not change the outcome, but it changes the grouping. So associated property of multiplication, again, it works the same way. If we had 1, 2, and 3 as our A, B, and C, 2 times 3 is 6, times 1 is 6. 1 times 2 is 2, doing inside the parentheses first, times 3 is 6, so 6 equals 6. All we're doing is changing inside the group. An easy way to remember which is associative and which is commutative. I like to think of the word coag. It's a really weird word, all right? Doesn't make any sense, doesn't have any meaning, but when I was your age, this is how I memorized it. Coag, commutative switches the order, associative switches the group. So remember, coag. Commutative switches the order, associative switches the group. Distributive property. Distributive property takes the number outside the parentheses and multiplies it by both the things inside. You're going to see some examples that say distributive over addition, if you had a plus sign here, or distributive over subtraction, which has a minus sign there. But we're taking what's outside and multiplying it by both the things in the inside. We're multiplying the A by the B, and then we're multiplying the A by the C, and we're adding those two answers together. Identity. The identity is yourself. Yourself is your identity. Whatever you start with is what you end with. If we add 0 to a number, you get the same exact number. 5 plus 0 still gives you 5. So the additive identity, we're adding 0 to something and getting itself. The multiplicative identity. Multiplicative means multiply. To get itself, when we multiply, we multiply by 1. For example, 5 times 1 is 5. So the identity is itself or yourself. The inverse. The inverse is like the opposite. The additive inverse, if we do 5 plus negative 5, we get 0. The additive inverse is the opposite. All right? Inverse is like reverse, which is like opposite. So 5 and negative 5. If we add those together, we get 0. The multiplicative inverse with multiplying, we have to multiply by the reciprocal. So a over 1 times 1 over a, these a's, think back to multiplying fractions, those would cancel out, you end up with 1. So the multipli multiplicative inverse equals 1. The multiplicative property of 0. Whenever you multiply a number by 0, you get 0. Anything times 0 is 0. So these are the properties that you have to know. Here is a quick matching. All right, we have to match up our answers with what we're doing here. Notice they also throw in things like, oh, all we're doing is combining like terms. So when we take a look at these, in the first one, this first one is actually, if you're doing this in class, I'd have you try them. Uh, the first one is actually H. All right, what we're doing here is the distributive property. We're taking the number outside, multiplying by both of the things inside. Number two is actually A. All right, what we're doing is just combining like terms. We're adding together our 6x and our negative 1x to be 5x. Number three is j. 
All right, what we're doing in J is the commutative property of addition. All we're doing is switching the order that we're doing things. It's, I know it might be a little hard to see. This says 8x plus 2. And then we switched around, we switched around actually these two terms. All right, we switched around those two terms, so we switched the order. Number four is K. K is the associative property. We switched what was inside the group. Technically, there's really an invisible set of parentheses there when you do order of operations, because this is what you're doing first. So we're switching what's inside the parentheses, what we do first to solve it. Five is G. G is the associative property of multiplication. Again, we switched what was inside the groups. We have 5x times 6, and we have 7 times 5x. We switched what we were multiplying first. In number 6, we're clearly switching the order. So this is B. We're switching the order and multiplying. That's why it's B, commutative of multiplication. 7 is C, distributive property over subtraction. We're taking the number outside, multiplying by both of the things inside. Number 8 is the is 15 plus 0. When we add 0, 0 is your identity. Whatever we start with, we end with. So we're adding 0 to a number and getting itself. So that's the additive identity. Number 9, we have opposites. We have 19 and negative 19. That is choice E, which is your additive inverse. Inverse is like reverse, which is like the opposite. So 19 plus 19 equals 0. Number 10 is the multiplicative inverse. All right, this is choice I. Um, we're multiplying with opposites. We have 14 over 1 times 1 over 14. We have those opposites, so these cancel out, and we get 1. Number 11 is choice F. This is the distributive property again. Um, this is the distributive property of division over subtraction. I'm not too worried about this one, uh, but we have, um, we're splitting up this fraction. That's really what we're doing there. And number 12 is choice L. We're multiplying by 1, therefore it's the multiplicative identity. Negative 16 times 1 is negative 16. Um, what they like to do on the Regents exam is give you a step-by-step -step and ask you what property we're using. So how do you get from step 1 to step 2? Well, what you're doing to get from step 1 to step 2 is notice the 4 and the plus are the same. We're distributing that 5. 5 times x and 5 times 7. So this is the distributive property. Um, it's really the distributive property over addition, if you want to be more specific. Um, from step two to step three, so how do you get from this step to this step? Notice that we are switching the order. Since we're switching the order, this is the commutative. And it's of addition. Right, commutative of addition because we're switching the order and we're adding. How do you get from step three to step four? Well, what are we doing here? We are, um, there's really an invisible set of parentheses here. We were doing this first according to order of operations. Now we're doing this first. So we're switching the grouping. So this is the associative of addition. In the middle example, how do we get from step one to step two? Well, I can see there's parentheses here, no parentheses here. What we're actually doing is the distributive property again. And if you want to be more specific with distributive, notice that we have subtracting. From step two to step three, we are switching the order. Notice we had four minus six x, then we had negative six x plus four. We're switching around the order. So this is commutative. And it's commutative with, um, with adding, all right? We're adding those two things together. How do you get from step three to step four? We are clearly switching the groups. It was, it was um, 7x, how do you get from step three to step four? You're switching the groups, all right? Um, we're, we're doing this first plus and then this. So we're making groups out of it. So that's why it is the associative. And we're adding. In the third example, we are clearly doing the distributive property first, 4 times x and 4 times 3. And from step 2 to step 3, we are doing the commutative property. We're switching the order. It was plus 12 and then minus 6, 5x. We're switching those around to be minus 5x plus 12. So it's the commutative. 
and that is um, addition. So you will have to do that as well in class kick, just write it in the text box. Here we have another matching. If you want to pause it and try it on your own, you can. Please pause it now. Number one was actually B. It's the commutative of addition. We're switching the order and we're adding. Number two was I.